you shouldn't be scared of putting on that persona because you're going to have to keep up with that. You should be scared that you might be missing the love of your life that God made specifically for you. No, no. You said on the last podcast that you, no one is made for you. You said that everyone is made whole yeah. and those are just bonuses. But God, no one is made half and then the other person completes them. You said it on the last podcast. <laughs> Welcome back into another episode of The Toolman Show. On this week's episode, George and I talked a lot. We actually kind of got in a little back and forth. Yeah. Um, Our friendship's over. Yeah. By the way, last episode didn't get 13,000 likes. What the hell, guys? Drop a like on this one. Uh, It really helps us out. And uh, we want you guys to comment because we talked a lot on this episode about relationships. Relationships. Which it seems like we've been talking a lot about, but a a fan asked a really, really good question um, about relationships, about being yourself around people. And then we kind of got on the topic of, do you think that you should go on dates and try to impress people and put on that like best version of yourself? Or do you think more so when hanging out with someone for the first time, you should bring them around your friends so they see how you are naturally and how you hang out in that environment. We'd love to know your guys' feedback. George disagreed with what I said and uh, we kind of got into it. So check out the podcast guys. Here comes our Vegas story. He got that because he's stripped. (laughs) Yeah. I have a side job. Did you rent a car? <clears throat> no, I just Ubered. Yeah. I spent the most on Uber out there. That's all I spent my money on. Yeah, Ubering from place to place. Yeah, that's it. I was in I was in the DJ booth with Alesso and then went back to Alesso's place and then I'm sitting there and I'm reaching my pocket for my wallet and it's gone. So I like I looked at the tile app and I was like, Oh shit, my wallet was still in the club. So I went back and found my wallet. And my phone died. Dude, I gotta get that tile app. Yeah, it came in clutch. It's called Tile App, that's it? Yeah, you put it in like your wallet or on your keys or whatever, and then you can track. But it only attracts based on like the last location. So someone could have taken it, but thank God someone turned it in. There's good Samaritans Wait, what do you there. mean the last location? Like it was close to your phone. It does like Bluetooth or something. Oh, so if somebody steals it, you're pretty much out of luck. Yeah, kind of. But someone turned it in. There's good people out there in the world today, which is it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Anyways. And most good people are listening to the Toolman Toolman Show. Show. Welcome back into another episode. I had a pretty eventful weekend. George had a pretty eventful weekend. Actually, I don't know. We haven't really spoken. We got to catch up. We'll we'll do that right now. Um, I'm in a relationship. Yeah, let's talk about this. (laughs) Because on two episodes ago... He was, I was like asking him if I can make this my thumbnail and I'll put it up here. What He's was like, it? I forgot what it was. It was you and uh, oh, it was, it was Shauna me kissing. Oh, no, I it was you, were you guys the... kissing and you're like, nah, bro, I don't want her in any of the, any of the thumbnails. Hard okay. cut. Okay, okay. A week later, she's your clickbait two times in a row. Well, then I would rather it be on my channel than somebody <laughs> else's channel. Um, no, I was actually completely honest. Like I was going to not vlog with her at all. Like how you did in Vegas. You didn't show anybody. Hey, it's just me, bro. Sure. <laughs> um, but I was like, no, I think this would be the best time to show my relationship because that was the best example. All we do is like really, you've seen us. Like you, you Mark introduced us. So <laughs> You're but, welcome. Yeah. So actually when Mark first brought her up, the first thing he said is like, I found the girl version of George Jenga. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> She's crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so because of our past on social media, um, past on social media, I took time away from it and we, we kind of sat down. We, we we're, we're at the part of our relationship. We're on the same page now. So our, our mindsets kind of think the same way. And we thought, um, we're not going to hide everything. We will choose what is healthy for us to post. Here's my question. So you're in social media. She's not really in social media. Yeah, but she's does a she fantastic mind? actress. Yeah, but does she mind being in your stuff? Um. So yes and no. So she's not going to be in every single thing because she is a working actress. Like right. she's on a TV show right now. She just got casted on. I can't. I don't. I'm not gonna say what it is because I don't know if she. Yeah. Put it out there yet? Yeah. yeah. She posted on her story, but we won't. We'll but let, we'll she let her she share did, that Yeah. Yeah. That's her. That's her news. Yeah. But she's always on the hustle and she's working. So like, I kind of like that we have two different things. You know what I mean? Like we're we only post on social media when I'm YouTubing it, and if it's right. like a, a vlog thing, and like I said, it's a healthy right. step. But You're not trying to be the next Mark and Kylie relationship goals. And take no, 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 no. I don't want. I don't want anything to be in a relationship matter yeah. Um, just because I want my relationship to blossom on its own and mm-hmm. like be healthy on its own. So we will share what we feel is 
okay to share. Also, yeah, when you're in a relationship on social media, there's so much more pressure. So from much the outside, more. So much more. It keeps you together. And it it makes you it makes you like read comments. It makes yeah. you uh, start measuring yourself to other. I've met a lot of social media couples that we know of that they're not happy in real life. Right. Like they fake that shit. Yeah. And I just don't want. This is me and her. Are, are, literally became best friends. Mm -hmm. We hang out all the time. And yeah, we, I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm your best friend. No, you're my you're my fucking best friend. Yeah. But like she Swear words. freaking your, best there friend. You go. Thank there you. you. No, like literally when I look at her, we were at the grocery store at like three o'clock in the morning and we were getting ice cream, but we were doing this weird dance in the in the in the aisle. And I was like, wow, this girl is weird. She's just as weird as me. And we're doing this weird dance and I was looking at her, I was like, God, I want to kiss this girl so bad. I was like, Oh, I could. She's my girlfriend. So like we're still at that. Why are you such a like a, a pussy when yeah. it goes this? <laughs> Uh, you're like turning into this like cute dude. Yeah. What happened to George fucking Django? Dude, it, dude, listen. She's obviously <laughs> she's changed you a softie, bro. Me. Yeah, I stopped watching well, actually, porn. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> you are. You've always been a softie in relationships. I, I, you so. know what? Here's the thing. Uh, oh, I got big news actually. I'm bringing, and this is literally the biggest news, and I'm I'm revealing it on uh, my uh, on the Tuman show. On the Tuman show, and I held off. Gonna, I didn't. I didn't even introduce her to your mom. This Tuesday. Shut the f no. My don't. mom asked to meet her. Yeah, that's the first time your mom's ever asked ever this in my life. Can we just pause the break? Oh, here we go. Now this is gonna be an argument about this. George has never introduced a female except one sh who shall not be named. No, who, no. You she never introduced the front page of porn. She never met in real life. Oh wow, his ex. Oh, I sent her the link <laughs> to that video, but like, uh, no, uh, my mom's never met. Which. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Just beat that all yeah. out. <laughs> George has never introduced a girl to his parents. Me, on the other hand, I could care less. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But why it's, it must be an Assyrian thing or? Yeah, of course. It's yeah. a culture thing, man. It's like, it's, it's an old school thing. By the way, people that listen to the podcast seem to love the way that you were raised. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's because I'm, I'm, dude, I'm special. No, there's not that much like me. Actually, there's a lot. I get a lot of emails from a lot of brown people out there. <laughs> I, I feel you guys. You, you, same thing. Um, no, there's a lot of things that my parents uh, taught me growing up that I will not be doing for my kids. Like I got in this, uh, a debate with my mom the other day and she's like, you will never be able to move in. I I, so I obey my parents mm -hmm. because in the Bible it says that if you go against your parents, your blessings. Honor thy mother and yeah, father. Yeah, so you're not going to be as blessed. God's not going to bless you. So I literally, like, even if I am, like, trying so hard to fight against them, until they give me the okay, I will not do it. So, like, for example, I would love in a year t a year or two to move in with with my girlfriend. Damn, this is moving wait, extremely fast. Wait, 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 wait. Let me even, this is a hypothetical just, oh, situation. Speaking, okay. But my parents would never let me until yeah. I'm married. Uh, guys, sorry to interruption. Um, the, the thing died, so yeah. Mark had to take a scooter to Target and, yeah. and get some I almost batteries. got hit by a car, but we got the batteries now. Okay, it's not about you right now. It's All about right, the yeah. melting pot. It's about the melting pot. Thank you. So we're leaving off in the melting pot because okay. my parents grew up in a different type of time and type of country. Yeah. So um, anyways, so like I was saying, it's a melting pot. And I was explaining to my mom, I was like, listen, like the way you were raised and the way dad was raised, if you take this cup, right, and you mm -hmm. pour it, it's going to fill the same amount of water because it's the same exact texture. It's the same exact everything. So how you were raised, he was raised. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like his mom and dad yelled at him for the same reasons your mom and dad yelled about you. You know what I mean? Because right. you guys had the same holidays, the same uh, beliefs, the same point of views. But I'm in America right now and America. everybody has different point of views, right. which is beautiful. The only thing that I, mind you, this is for me, not for everybody else. So don't just jump down my throat when I say this. The only thing I hold value to on my own and that I won't change is that the way I look at Christ. So I would want somebody that looks at the same way that I do when it comes to God. But everything else I think is exciting that they're looking at in a different point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be able to live with somebody because what if it doesn't match up? You know what I mean? Like what if you guys uh, have a holiday, right? And you're like, oh no, I want to do the holiday this way. And she's like, well, no, no, that's crazy. I want to do holiday this way. So then now you're like, oh, I can't live with this person. This person's crazy. I never saw it before. Right. My mom was like, you don't have to live with them to know that they're crazy. I go, yeah, you do. Because let me tell you <laughs> something. Um, when you live some with somebody, yeah. they, they don't have the chance to run away when things get hard. Mm -hmm. they, they have their safe zone. So they could put on that face and be like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go home and vent it out. But what if, like, Belle, for example, what if she goes home and just throws everything against the wall and breaks everything? She's like, ah, now I feel better. And I'm like, wait, no, I have to deal with that yeah, when yeah. I, like, you live with you? Like, that's crazy. I don't know. I, I don't know that I would live with my next girlfriend. That's hard, bro. But before you get married, though? 
Yeah, at some point. So but I, 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 I don't have that choice. So do you trust me? Take it. Take what? the choice. <laughs> take it. Oh, you're not going to live with them, you're saying? I can't. My mom won't let me. How do you pick and choose what you take from the Bible and what you don't take from the Bible? Why do you pick that you're going to respect your parents, but other places you're like, eh, walk on that one a little bit more uh, lightly? Because actually in the Bible, it does explain what is like held more accountable to you. So yeah, I, like for example, oh, that's a perfect example, Mark. Mark, thank you so much. I said this to my mom. I go, mom, that whole like living after marriage thing only really had value to it because people were not having sex with their significant other mm-hmm. at the time until marriage. I go, I don't know how to break this to you, but I'm having sex, <laughs> a whole lot of sex. Having lots of sex. <laughs> and I think it's, it's kind of pointless that I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to wait anymore. What am I waiting for? Yeah. Like to, to share a mailbox? Like what, what are we sharing? Um, but my mom's like adamant on it. So I'm like, all right, I'm standing firm. If she's standing firm, I'm going to stand firm on it. I the- feel like one episode we should have your mom on. Oh my God. And have a That'd talk be amazing. with her. She's coming next week. We should have her on. I'm yeah. going home. I kind of want to do an episode with my dad and get like, I had this idea of having him lecture me on the podcast about, cause my dad's very, very Catholic. And I've talked about this with Nate on the podcast and, he gives he gives me a lot of lectures. <laughs> he does. Yeah. I mean, like, oh. we have different like times are changing. But oh, here, by the way, going back to the whole, this is the first time my mom's ever um, wanted to meet my girlfriend is mm. because every time I've ever had a girlfriend, she just knew this wasn't the one. Mm. Like right off the bat, she's like, "No, that's not the one. Not the one." In fact, my last ex, I was like, I got really mad at her, and I was like, "Mom, like." You keep saying, now is not the right time. Now is not the right time. Point blank, look me straight in the face. She goes, now and never will ever be the right time. She's not the one for you. Move on. And I was just like, whoa. So I got really heartbroken because I was like, man. That's a hard truth. Yeah, it's a hard truth. Especially but you don't she was hear, right. You don't want to hear it from your parents. You want your parents to support you yeah. in your relationship. So it kind of sucks. When so that's why when, when I found out, I was like blown away. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. This is uh, nuts. But also. Did, I, that hurt, did that hurt your feelings that your parents didn't support your relationship? Did that make you be like, oh man, maybe? No, I was kind of like, oh, they don't know, they don't know. Like, uh, like one day they'll like come to it, like they'll like understand. But no, they were kind of. I kind of came to their understanding, and I realized from outside looking in that it wasn't good. It wasn't a healthy relationship, and it wasn't meant for me. Well, what about? I mean, for example, Stenage. Remember the song that he wrote about his brother and his wife? Yes. That he performed at the wedding. Didn't. That wasn't the whole story behind that. That they didn't really approve of each other. Yeah, that's why I thought maybe they would like they would have yeah. that like thing. But in this case, no, the parents are right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. By the way, guys, I I forgot to let you guys know that we we introduced a new camera to the setup, so you guys can get like a behind the scenes of how we do this, so you can see Justin sitting over here filming and doing the audio and. Oh, that's so we could add Justin turning yeah. the camera back well, and forth. A lot of people want to start their own podcast and they maybe want to this, see the production. Yeah, this is the production. We'll, oh, we'll cut wow. to that angle a few times. Oh, wow. But I wanted to ask you something. George. That's why he's sitting up straight. He's like, Yeah, he's like, I got to keep my posture good this whole time. <laughs> it's a. I want to talk about knowing your role in a friend group because I think we have a lot. Knowing your role? Knowing your role in a friend group. Like like, like if you're the bitch out of the friends? No, Justin, not how do you that. feel about this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's just the camera. Because we got a lot of comments about friends and fitting into friend groups and, and we got a lot of uh, questions. I don't get the, I don't get the, why well, do I keep looking at you as if I'm a, sorry, I'm distracted now that you brought up the camera. Well, what do you mean? What, 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 well, I was listening role? to a fan question. It might even be in this episode or it might have been one that I didn't choose, but it was something about like this guy... He like tries to put on this character so people like him. And I think that it's important to, and I talked about this with Pearson. I was like, yeah. cause we were trying to come up with a TV show idea or like a web series idea. And I was yeah. like, he's like, uh, I was like, George is the funny dude. He's, he's the steal the show. Justin's quiet. Pierce is, Pearson's a good looking dude. He's, um, he's a talented actor. And then I, he's like, well, what are you like? What is, what is my role in the friend group? What would you say my role is? Um, to be honest, when when I look when I think of Mark, I think of organized, getting things done, very adultish but fun at the same time. Like you are the one that gathers everybody and makes sure everybody's on track. That's literally what Pearson said. He said your role is literally this. He's like you bring people together. Yeah, and uh, and I think you're good at you're good at not only like bringing people to their best abilities. You're at multiple angles. You know what I mean? You could like for example, you started this podcast, right? This podcast would have not existed if you didn't sit down and be like, okay, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like when me and you started to do the skits, I would come up with the jokes and the comedy. You'd come up with the vision of where you wanted it to go, how it was going to be shot, where it's going to look, where the location is. Like 
there people have multi talents and different things and that's your aspect you see things and then you kind of just take off on it right and that's kind of what i want to talk about is like if you guys are out there and you're like you're jealous of a friend being a better role or people liking him more not necessarily to try to emulate that person but continue to be yourself and know your role in the friend group like i know when i'm hanging out with a group of people and George is there. I could just sit back because George <laughs> is gonna steal the show and he's gonna entertain. Like even when we would like hang out with girls, like we would hang out with a group of girls. George would be the entertaining one, and all the girls are laughing the whole time, and I'm just sitting back there plotting. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, which one? So of this that? one's not laughing yeah. that hard. She's the one. Okay, this one is gonna laugh way too hard. She's gonna pee her pants. I'll meet her in the bathroom. But I think it's it's also it's very important to know your role in the friend group and not try to emulate your friends. Uh, I had a, something written down here. I don't know why I wrote this down because I think I was on. Oh, I saw it on Twitter. What's your favorite condiment for chicken nuggets? <laughs> oh my god, uh, uh, barbecue sauce is like the go-to. Obviously, you pick barbecue, uh, to go to. But like, if I was like, mm, I'm gonna fancy it up today, get my taste buds jumping, it'd be like the Chick Fil A eight ounce sauce. You mean the sauce you get every single time? Yeah, <laughs> it's eight ounce. I, I think I would that. either go with honey mustard. I never had that. Or sweet and sour sauce. See, I never had any of those. What would you get, Justin? Polynesian, oh, Polynesian or I heard what's is really that? popular. Yeah, Polynesian? Yeah. That's from Chick-fil-A, yeah. That's uh, like the second best one there, right? That's what they said. That's the but this segues into, uh, since we're talking about food. God, I'm so hungry now. We're, By the way, I wanted to start an ASMR video, uh, YouTube channel where I eat. They just well, silently. we've gotten several comments to stop eating on the podcast. So Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They don't like us chewing. <laughs> that's for you guys. We were at Cheesecake this past weekend. Yes. And George caused a scene. Oh, my God. Should I play a snippet of it? Yes, please. <laughs> I forgot about that. There's a snippet of it. Is it back? Oh <laughs> You're such a... Why don't you tell the people why? <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Um, uh, oh, okay, so I am not. I, I'm the nicest one. Out, like when it comes to like not fighting, I always tell people to look at other people's sides of views. You know what I mean? So I'm jumping into this because my mind just. You're not scattered. talking about the B. I am. I uh, am. Okay, you're getting so to the waiter I'm getting, part. I'm getting. I'm getting to it. I'm getting. I'm getting to it. Okay, so I was really embarrassed. Okay, um, I. Oh God, I'm a little bit, I'm sporadic right now because yeah. there's so many things going on. Okay, because something happened yesterday. That's why I was like, Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to spin it off into both ways. Okay, so the cheesecake thing, I I made it as a joke, but I was actually kind of embarrassed. A bug hit my girlfriend's hair, <laughs> and I did not try to fend or <laughs> protect or anything. I got up and sprinted off. Yeah, li it literally, it was just a bug. It was like a lotus or yeah. something. Yeah, it was or a lotus a of crap. Wait, lotus or locust? Locust. Yeah. Mark's so paranoid to say the wrong thing yeah. on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but I took off and you know how like jokes are stemmed off of truth? So finally, 10 minutes later, smoke clears. The bug's gone. She sits down and she's like getting herself together. I turn and the whole entire restaurant is staring at me. And I go, now you guys may have seen me <laughs> get up and run away from my girlfriend while she needed me. It's because... I only care about myself. And then everybody <laughs> started dying of laughter. So I was like, I could take this moment and be embarrassed or mm -hmm. I can make them laugh and then play it off and confuse yeah. them, you know? But yeah, was, I was definitely. Why did you not try to help your girlfriend? Why were you being a little bitch? Dude, you know what? I don't know what's wrong with me. As a human being, like I, I, I pick but and choose. But that just tells me, that just tells me, say George and his girl are walking down the alley and they're about to get robbed. Before he can, before his girlfriend even looks over at him, he's gone. So, so, so here's, <laughs> here is the, the honest truth. It was a bug and I ran away. When I was dating Shelly, a, a guy pulled out a knife on us. Remember? When we oh, came yeah. out of the, uh, movie, the, theater. the movie theater and I took my belt off and smacked him with it. So like, <laughs> so it's weird to sit back and be like, a tiny bug, you take off running. But then a guy pulls out a knife and you're like ready to defend. This happened yesterday. We were walking out of uh, I, I, I Every day on the podcast, I'm telling people, hey- Look the other way. You know, like <laughs> if somebody's giving you a, a, a problem, you just walk away because maybe they're just having a bad day. And I, you, uh, behind the scenes, right. me and Mark were going through things and he was really flustered and he didn't understand why I was like, like cool as a cucumber. And then I sat down and I was trying to give him the other person's point of view. And he's looking at me and I'm like trying to, yeah, that's what I do. I'm really good at doing that. Mm -hmm. For some reason, there's times where I snap and I'm yeah. just in beast mode. I'm walking on the uh, the sidewalk and we're crossing the street. It's all right away. Yeah. yeah. 
This guy slams on his horn, and he's, him and his boy start laughing, and I immediately just freak out and try to fight all three of them. Like, and blacked out. They were in the car? Oh, yeah. I spit it towards their car. I was like, get out of the fucking car now. And my girlfriend's like, what is wrong with you? And I go, I don't really know. This really pissed me off. So what happened? They didn't get out of the car. They drove off really quick because I like. Charged. Why are they laughing? Did they scare you? They thought that I was gonna be like jumping up and then like 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 they're like oh like like an asshole. Yeah. But I like was not having it, and I just immediately went into fight mode, which is so stupid. And if you're out there listening, that's not me being macho. They could have had a gun. They could have jumped me. They could have done something stupid. So I don't look at that as in like oh he's macho. Like that was a very dumb decision. But like why not defend your girlfriend at a cheesecake <laughs> and try to fight three guys at a like I don't get myself. I was just. Like, it was a bug, man. Like, when that shit happens to me, I'm from Ohio. I'm just like, like. I'm, I don't I don't mess with bugs, what man. What is that? I think I use that as an excuse a lot. I'm from Ohio. Remember when I dropped, uh, I dropped like, a piece of food on the ground at the gas station? And I was oh, like, my. The dirtiest. This guy <laughs> dropped. Yeah, mind you, the gas station, not inside of the store, outside where people piss and, like, pour gas. And, the, and, and it's just the most disgusting. He goes, I'm from Ohio. Mm, and he just eats it. And <laughs> no, I, go, I didn't eat it. You stopped me. You wouldn't let me do it, but I said I was going to You would have eaten it. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know. Either. I think five first seconds. First of all, I've been to I'm Ohio. i die. It's not that bad. Yeah. Not everybody outside is, like, cooking on the ground. No, you're just, when you're... Born and raised in Ohio, you're born to be tough. I'm from Arizona, Scottsdale. George is the <laughs> most paranoid spoiled. person I've ever met in my entire life. 100%. Why? Why at do you our, think that? What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> at, our, at our old house, he had a lock on the door. He had a firearm. <laughs> Yo, uh, dude, first of all, <laughs> let's not talk about my firearm. Uh, and second of all, I have a lock because, one, I lived with you, Grady, and Kylie. I know you guys, but people invite people over. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And I don't want you guys. Listen, there were so many times Mark was playing Fortnite and he had friends over and they're just wandering the house. I go, yo, who are these people? He's like, I'll be right there with them. And it's like 45 minutes later. It's like, yeah. in 45 minutes, they could have robbed me and I had no idea who that person was. So you got to lock your door. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> now I live alone in my own house. Um, well, how you, apartment. How do you like living alone? I wanted to talk about this. I was thinking about making like a, an entire YouTube video about living alone. I love living alone and I hate living alone, but I think everyone needs to do it to grow. Learn, grow. Yeah. yeah learn yeah, a lot yeah. about themselves. You lived alone, I lived alone all the time until the, the time. last two years. Yes. So here, we'll, I, we'll I, talk I, about this. Yeah. Cause okay, you've lived alone and I'm living alone for the very first time. I like the fact that I can wake up in the morning and I don't have to talk to anyone. I can get my shit done, go live my day. Um, no, no distractions or whatever. The only time that I hate living alone is when I'm like lonely. <laughs> so all the so time. all the time. No, at nighttime when you know there's no one to hang out with, and I'm just kind of sitting here twiddling my thumbs, like fuck, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, it's I guess it's like first of all, it's I, I think it has to do with me being a male. One, mm -hmm. when I came out here, I, I was always babied and it was in the nest. So when I came out here and I had a beautiful studio apartment. I like decked that out to be a bachelor, you know, yeah. what I mean? like I, I like I invited girls over. We had a good time like and then they left. Mm -hmm. So like I don't I, I had that two years of like just dating and having fun and being free. And uh, so I think that's why I wanted to live by myself because I had nobody to answer to. I could play music whenever I wanted. I could right. have a girl come at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. That's why I like it, too. I can have people over here at the club after whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? I could do whatever I want and not have to answer to anybody. But then I had roommates for the first time with you, Kylie and Grady and I like the fact that I could have my own bedroom and have my own personal space. And when I was bored, I'd just go downstairs and hang out with my friends. So I like that. But I feel like when we lived together, you were left all the time. Yeah, because I didn't, okay, out of respect for your relationship with Kylie, I didn't want it to cause a problem. So every time I was out with a girl, I'd either go to her place or I would uh, go out. I would never bring girls back home. It's good that you just said that because I wanted to actually introduce a new segment that I used to have on the my vlog called Girl Logic. There's no girls here to talk, but usually if you guys have questions, drop them down below for drop for, them right down for Girl Logic. I wanted to ask this: Why is it that guys girls always go over to the guy's house and guys never go over to the girl's house? See, you said that to me, and I I don't I don't 100 percent agree because I've been to never a, in my life. By the way, he let's just just throw this out there. He wanted to invite my girlfriend to have this conversation <laughs> and get her opinion. I go, yeah, that's what I want to do for 45 minutes. <laughs> Talk about the times that she either went to his house or brought it back to her house. Like, what the fuck? I'm just Frick, asking. Sorry. Never in my life has a girl been like, hey, you want to get out of here and go back to my place? Um, Never. Maybe because a lot of girls have roommates out here or I don't know. Like, I don't really know. 
But it's also, oh, here's another thing. Oh, I figured it out. Oh, I figured it out. <laughs> ready? Are you ready for this? What if you're crazy? Right? She's like, I don't want this guy to know where I live. I want to know where he lives. I don't want to vice that, versa. You think it's a safety thing? They Probably. Feel safer think going about to it. House? If you're a girl, dude, here's the thing. Chris D'Elia said it very, very clear. He goes, girl, guys are like, oh, yeah, I want to get into that. I want to get into that. Uh, uh, I want to get into that. But he made such a good point. Girls let you go into that. That is weird. If you think about it, you go into them, right? So, like, if you're inviting somebody into your house and inside of you, you must <laughs> trust that person. Like, am I right? I'm sorry. I'm kind of going all over the place. But think about it. Like, if I was a girl and I was like, oh, no, I, I like you, but I don't know if I really like you. Like, when I'd be like, come over to my house right now. So you, Because think about it. Guys play tricks all the time. We lie all the time. Yeah. Like, you walk up and you're like, oh, I love your shoes. You don't love her shoes. You <laughs> shit about her shoes. So right off the brick, like, people know guys are fibbers. They're lying. They're trying to get into your pants so they're going to say whatever. Girls are not dumb. They just play along with it so they don't feel slutty. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, he loves my shoes. I'm going to go to his place. Not, <laughs> not he really likes it. Like, I guarantee you, if you're like, oh, I love your shoes. <laughs> Steve Madden's edition three. She's like, oh, yeah, I invited this guy back to my place. He knows his shoes. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever gone to a girl's house? Yeah. I never have. Really? Never. Maybe you just have that face, dude. They're just like, dude. I'm just intimidating. Yeah. But I, I would love to go to a girl's house so then I can leave. <laughs> don't, oh, that's the best. Right? Yeah. Then the it's best. in your control. Like, yeah. Oh, actually. You invite a girl over and you're like, uh, ah. I don't know how to say this, but you got to go. <laughs> oh, no, man. It's like, you, you know what? It's funny. Uber helped a lot. Yeah. Uber has helped so much. Oh, let me get because, you an Uber. Yes, because you're a gentleman. You're like, yeah. hey, let me get you. It's 630 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no searches. I got you. <laughs> you want it's an so X out? true. But it's like, and it avoids the conversation of like, hey, when are you going to leave? So you're just like, you don't even have to say that. You're just like, oh, let me grab you an Uber. Have and you then ever, it's like, uh, they're like, oh, he wants me to leave. Have you ever had like an independent girl from like 2019? This is an independent girl from 2019. Ready? Ready? This is What year is it right now? It 2000, is 2019. Yeah. Ready? This is it. Why do I think it was 2020 for a second? Go ahead. Because we're so ahead of our time yeah. now. <laughs> uh, this is it. Ready? This is quotations. I'm going to get so many DMs quoting. This is an independent girl <laughs> in 2019. Quote me. Ready? <clears throat> no, no, no. It's okay. I'll get my own Uber. <laughs> that that <laughs> yeah. right there is 2000. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're just like, oh, let me get you an Uber. No, no, no. It's okay. I'll get my own Uber. And then they'll like, get their own Uber. But I, that always happens. And then I'm always like, nah, I got you. And they're like, yeah, okay. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I play on Instagram. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So cool. But imagine her being like, no, I'll get my own Uber. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to do? Fight you for it? No, I get Lyft coupons. It's fine. Yeah. Where's, uh, <laughs> I have this written down, guys. This was crazy. This, this goes back to me living alone. I forgot to bring this up. I came home from the gym the other day and I look across the parking or the. Oh. <laughs> I look my, outside. Are you showing them the video or not? I don't know. If, I'm going to show it on my vlog, so stay tuned for that. I saw this video, by the way. He's not lying. This is completely true. <laughs> there was two people on the rooftop having sex. Broad daylight, 2.45 in the afternoon. I have video evidence. I feel wrong that I filmed it, but it was the, hun the funniest thing ever. Uh, I'll probably have to blur their faces. But anyways, they're doing it, and me and... I put on my close friends... <laughs> Me and Pearson are watching it, and I'm like, "Yo, should we should we say something to them? Should we like go and scream?" And they, he's like, "Nah, let's wait. Let's wait to see what if he finishes." And I was like, "Bro, I don't know. I see." By a lot the way, of two grown men are watching yeah. another man have sex. <laughs> I just throw that out there. He's trying to make it seem so casual. It's not casual. You you you're watching other people have yeah, sex. Yeah, but it's one of those things that it's like an uh, like yeah, oh my watching. god moment. Yeah, 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 you can't course. just not watch it. So I'm like, dude, I'm I'm nervous for them because people are always surveying that. The rooftop they're always checking up on it and then sure enough no bullshit right after i said that guy walks up catches him i see the girl put on her pants i've never seen someone put on pants this quick she runs off to the side he's standing there the guy talks to them he's like hey come down probably um so the girl goes down and then he stands there and then me and pearson go out and we're like yeah man and the guy was like yeah <laughs> but i gotta say the, okay, Mark's about to go this into detail I'm going on into how the big this man's penis is. Because, mind <sighs> you, he came to my house and we literally had lunch talking about this. Yeah. He is so infatuated on this guy's stroke. I'm game. not. But I watched the video. He's right. He's I'm not kidding. I'll show you guys to see how far away this building is. Um, I'll show you if you're if you're watching and not listening. That's how far away the building is. And I'm not kidding you. I saw his penis. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's saying he had a third leg. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! This podcast has gone 
We've talked about Watch. some. Do you know what's funny? Somebody's like telling their moms, like, I get so much nourishment from this podcast. <laughs> Mom, dad, please sit down with me. Yeah. And for like 15 minutes, you're like, yeah, his penis is so huge. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, anyways, uh, guys, we want you to, to either comment on Alyssa Violet's Instagram post or tweet at her. Blow her up because she was supposed to be on the, the podcast this week and she never replied she to me. She bailed. she bailed on us. I was like, hey, Alyssa, will you be on the show with me and George? And she was like, yeah, of course. When do you want to shoot it? And I was like, how's. <laughs> Did you just throw up in your mouth? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, how's Friday at two? And then the uh, crickets. So no, no response from Alyssa there. <laughs> so we're officially no longer friends with Alyssa Violet? Yeah. Um, hopefully she can be on the next episode. Like I said, you guys should comment and tell her to be on the app. Oh, by the way, should we should we change the name of the this podcast to the Tuman Show? I don't know why you haven't yet. A lot of people are, are what are you doing on your phone? I get so mad when people come up to me and they're like, dude, I love you on Mark's podcast. I go, you mother- <laughs> this is our podcast. <laughs> the two men show. It's not the Mark and the other two men. Oh, that technically would work. Oh, frick. But then what happens when we have a guest on? Is it still the two men show or is it live in large? <laughs> uh, no, live in large. Was, Dro- your, was was what? Was I was there? gonna say, drop a like if you want it to be the Tuman. Yeah, show. comment, comment Tuman show if you wanted to. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't think of anything crazy to think about. Also, if you're if you're still listening at this point, that that would be extremely awesome. What did you do this weekend? We need to catch up. I didn't talk to you all weekend. Uh, I went I went out with my girlfriend. We had a, a getaway, and then you went. Oh wait, no, this weekend. No, this weekend. Oh, I went to Vegas. I George went to Vegas. Had a blast. <laughs> I went to. Can we talk about how in Vegas we're treated like kings? Like kings, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. So in LA, as you guys know, uh, everyone and their cousin is a social media influencer. So it's saturated out here. You don't really get treated that dope anymore. But when you go to Vegas, that's a business. That's a a city that knows the art of marketing. Yeah, they really they, do take advantage of it. They they're so smart mm-hmm. because Vegas is. Everyone goes to Vegas to party and have a good time. So they use social media influencers like ourselves to show to what, market what good times it yeah, is. Yeah, and we do have. Great and it times. may not be a return on investment right away. Like, like most, like no one's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to Vegas tomorrow" because Mark went to Vegas and did this dope thing. You don't know. But that. like five years down the line, if you're going to Vegas for a bachelorette party or a bachelor party, and you're like, "Oh my god, I remember." seeing what restaurants they went to. I remember seeing them True. do the Lamborghini racing. I want to do all those things. It goes a long way. Um, I had a blast in Vegas and uh, I won $10,000. So yeah, is that why you're holding cash? Yeah. I thought you got On the last the episode. I told you guys I lost $25,000, but this I'm chipping away. I didn't lose 25,000. I was up 25,000 and then lost what I was up. So I didn't end up losing, but I did come up on top $10,000. That's the most money George has ever held in his life. Ever in my life. This is so nice. <laughs> Three videos ago, I had 10,000 in my hand spending it an hour. So, oh, you did? Yeah. So people were like, what are you talking about? Just oh, three videos for ago. Jake's? Yeah. Yeah. This is How so about you get that back? Yeah, man, for sure. There you go. Yeah, thanks, man. And then uh, this is justin's portion for filming the podcast so drop a like subscribe (laughs) and uh, let us know if you guys want to work for us we pay very very well very very well we're actually losing money um (laughs) but what did you do bro um dude i don't remember to be honest i know we were i was working a lot this weekend uh and then um i helped trisha dude trisha is getting into youtube now yeah she's her last video crushed it with me yes and she's she uploaded another one today Mm -hmm. um She's but she pass needs, us soon. Yeah, for real, dude. I keep telling her, yeah, you got it. I want people around me to start working. Like, yeah. I want people to get up every single day and not just have to do what we're doing. I want them to do what they're doing, so that way we have something to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have to. Well, that's what I've always talked about. That's what what my biggest frustration is. Is when we used to all create. It was no question. It was not like we would wake up. We were vlogging. You were vlogging. We were creating a skit. Like, that's changed. We haven't. I need to post more on my YouTube. Which I, I need to post on my Instagram. Same here. I've been really bad at it. Yeah. Are, are, so are views going to go down on YouTube now that people are back in school? Or how does that work? No, I think they go up, yeah? Because they're not outside playing. They're like going to school and coming home and sitting on YouTube. I think it works out better that way. Oh, I got I think in the summer, a lot more people are out having fun and they don't really sit on their phones. They're at the pool. I and thought all people that. were in school, so they're like, they don't have time to be on YouTube because they're no. doing homework and all that no. stuff. No, they don't hang out with their friends as much during the week. So when you post during the week, I think during school, it'll do better because you sit around. Like you finish your homework and you're, it's already 6 p.m., you know? 
homeworks. Or I don't know do how people homework. do it. These days. <laughs> yeah, most people don't do homework, or they do it before class. I used to do that sometimes. That makes sense. That makes I would, sense. I would actually. copy off my friends before class if I forgot. Just like get to school like twenty minutes early, and then take some of my friends' homework, copy it down for first period. Because, You're learning from me because school started. Yeah. Yeah, school's back up. Isn't that crazy? Summer went by like that. I'm not even in school, and I'm like, damn, school's back up. Yeah, you know what's so funny? Every time they're like, oh, back to school, I get like jitter. I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to go back to school. But I was like, oh, I don't have school, but I still feel like, oh, God. Yeah, you didn't You didn't even graduate, did you? A high school, I did. <laughs> I graduated high school. <laughs> Thanks, man. I graduated college in four years, or three years. I got a four-year degree in three years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty much... Really fucking smart. You got anything? You got any crazy stories? You need me to ask you some juicy questions? No, I gotta ask you a juicy question. What What's do you want to put you in this uh this this whole like bachelor situation? Oh, you're gonna bring up that. I mean, yeah, nothing else to bring up. The bachelor. So is girls in, were is, fighting about you on, oh, on the geez. show. Oh, that bachelor. <laughs> George. <laughs> George. We're gonna have to bleep that. What? Wow, that's great. This this, uh, this is some good stuff right there. This is personal. I don't feel like talking about Bro, this. I literally go, hey, I don't want my girlfriend to mention a podcast. And you just throw <laughs> out that I have a girlfriend for the last two podcasts. So with all due respect, I fuck didn't you. do anything. But if you want, I don't watch the show The Bachelor in Paradise. But you date all the girls on it. No, I don't date them on it. I met them at Stagecoach, which I guess I looked at Twitter and Stagecoach is trending right now because I guess it's it's a topic of discussion on The Bachelor in Paradise. I, I did hang out with one of them one time, and then I did hang out with one of the, another one of them another time. <laughs> hang out. <clears throat> hey, but if it makes you feel better, I would have never met Belle if you didn't hang out with the Bachelor people. So there you go. See? I got you a girlfriend out of it. Yeah. Things didn't go my way. <laughs> well, <laughs> by choice, but... Oh, it's so funny. But I guess there's some drama on the show, and I was almost sucked into the drama... Why did they say, dude, that would have been so good for you, man. So much, so much more cloud coming your way. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not like trying would to, would you ever be drama. on the show? Fuck no, <laughs> never. But the guy that was like, in, is involved in all the drama. He reached out to me and he was like trying to get some insider information. And yeah, I was, he was like, texting. He's like, Hey man. So like, you don't have to answer this or anything. But yeah. Like, what? Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and I was like, uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to stay out of this. But now that you just said shit, see, we got to bleep half this because then it's going to get involved and then I'm going to get sucked into it and then everyone's going to be at this nah, fiasco nah, and then nah. the feelings are going to be heard over here and feelings are going to be heard over there and this is the whole reason I don't want to be on the damn show The Bachelor. But if you're bachelor? casting for next season, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also, guys, a lot of you have been asking what motivational videos I've been listening to, so I'm going to put them in the description below. Kind of just type in motivational video and I listen to one and then they usually just play one after another. But some of my favorites, I'll put in the link in the description. Or just listen to this podcast. Maybe. Or you could listen to this podcast, which actually I was just uh, on Instagram and Gary V was like, stop. He's like, I, I love Drake's new album and all this stuff, but start listening to podcasts, like educate yourself, learn when you're in the car, listen to it. When you're on the treadmill, listen to it. Like I, and the same thing goes for when I'm working out, like I listen to not podcasts, but these motivational things and you guys can listen to the podcast, whatever it may be. But I mean, music is, you can listen to it when you party, when you're with friends and all that stuff, but like really I, try to learn and get knowledge. I actually started listening to country music and it's so funny because like everybody would be, growing up, I'd be like, oh, I hate country, I hate country. Yeah. And now I realize that country music is like wanting, like is to be honest, the only thing now I listen to that it's like has good value to it. All the other songs on the pop charts are like, what? Yeah, I don't listen to any of that crap. It's so I bad. like Bozzy's new stuff. Um it's so bad. It has no meaning. There's no. There's nothing valuable about the music that's made today. Right. I just took shots at a whole lot of people. Let's get into the fan questions. Oh, thank God. Let's do that. Yeah. Hey, Mark. This is a question for you and George. Recently, I have been worrying about my ex and thinking about her a lot, and I'm just trying to figure out how I can get over her. Like a thought that has been going through my mind is that school has started back up. Everyone's going back to school. She is, and my just. What's on my mind is that she will like talk to other guys and I get it shouldn't be an issue for me since we're broken up, but like, what do I have to do to get over it? How do you get over your ex? The get question, under the next. I'm get under kidding. the next? Yeah, no no. no. no, 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 no. That's actually the worst advice anybody could give you. How? I don't know, dude. Everything just takes time and everybody has their own angles of doing it. Like, well, I've, he's not worried about getting over her. He's just like figuring out why he's upset with the situation he's been dealt. I mean, I think that's pretty normal if you're in love with somebody or was in love with somebody and you're moving on. Of course, you don't want to see that other person start falling in love with somebody else. Right. But you, 
here's the thing, man. Like, I'm letting you know right now because you said high school, right? You just said high school? No, they're going away to school. I think college. Well, regardless, bro, you're so young. So I'm going to tell you what my mom and dad told me. <clears throat> it's most likely not going to be the one you marry. So <laughs> you got to learn and move on from it. Just because it sucks now doesn't mean it's going to suck forever. Right. The sad truth is, and I hate to break it to you, she is going to be with somebody else. You are going to be with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if it is meant to be, you guys will end up together if it's meant to be. But if it's not, then you move on to the next person. Yeah, I think it's you don't really have a choice. Like, you can't sit there and be like, damn, I really wish I had her back. Like, what if she talk, meets another guy? Like, Because that's gotta, just pride at that just point. Gotta, yeah. You just got to move on and live your life. And like I said, you could take in previous podcasts, you got to take and you got to want to take the right steps into getting better. You know, get, get it off your mind. Go do things. Find something to consume your time. There's a reason it ended. Yeah, there's a reason it ended. Speak to people. Read books. Listen to podcasts. Um, I used to always think that because my last <clears throat> relationship was my first relationship. And I was always like, are we going to get back together? Like this, this, and that. I was checking up on her Instagram and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Don't look <clears throat> at her Instagram. Don't try yeah. to follow up on what she's doing. Because you're just, you're never, it's you're prolonging it. Yeah, and it's not gonna make you happy. Don't look at old text messages. I did all that stuff. Yeah, I, I I'm so quick at moving on. I delete text messages, and I just never ever ever go back mm -hmm. and look at their stuff because that will help you move on so much faster. Because knowledge is power, man, and that goes with everything. So mm -hmm. if you give power to your breakup taking a longer time route, is everything. Yeah, in a breakup, time is everything. It's just not something that's gonna happen overnight because you have so many memories and whatnot. I even, I mean, I would say that I am over my ex, but also I thought I saw her like a week or two ago. Like I saw this girl that looked like her in the back of her head and I was like, my heart dropped. So I haven't seen Kylie in what, eight months since we broke up. I haven't even seen her in real life. Mm -hmm. So like for me to see her for the very first time, I was like, oh God, I was not expecting this. Yeah. See, like me and her are at different times. I could see my ex right now and go give her a hug and say yeah. hi. Like it, to me, I feel like I could do that, but it was just like in the moment I wasn't expecting it and it was just a weird thing. Yeah. So yeah, it takes time, man. I would say that I'm over her, but I would not, I don't know if that still happens and I'm still a pussy. So how's it going boys? I just had a quick question for y'all. I know that, uh, George is pretty Christian and, um, like my question for you guys is that, uh, of course, you know, about all the conflicts and controversies that happen around the world about religions and, um, you know, people forcing each other to convert, killing, and, you know, all those pretty terrible things. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about that? And uh, what do you think is a possible solution for all of us? Um, just wanted to hear you guys' thoughts on it. And um, by the way, loving the show. Keep it going. I think this is an interesting thing. I think it boggles my mind. Like, I, I'm very understanding that there can be, you know, you can believe in this, you can believe in this, you can believe in this. It just boggles my mind that people, like, start wars over it. Of like people not believing in the same thing. Um, my family had to leave a country because they were killing off Christians that, you know, praised God in their belief. I am a firm believer that everybody should be able to worship whoever they want to worship. Mm -hmm. I think that just goes to show you that regardless of what religion you you worship there's evil in each one there's because people make bad decisions that doesn't make that religion wrong or you shouldn't turn your head to a religion because of what they're doing because people that are christian and walk around as if they're the best they need to look at the hands that have been dealt there's a lot of bad things that happen in christianity as well um I don't think a religion necessarily makes you a bad person i think there's bad people that follow a certain religion and a lot of bad people are extreme to it. And it's either you follow with us or you die. And it's sad. There's nothing we could do in the moment right now because it's happening all the time. And it's been happening since this world has been mm -hmm. spinning. But I think you just have to, honestly, my answer would be lead with an example. So follow whoever you follow. Like, for example, I follow Christ and I will only love every single person that's come across. You know what I mean? Like, so if I sit across somebody who worships another Lord, I have to respect their culture because I respect them as a human being. So when we went to Dubai, we learned that different cultures did this and did that, and I did it. Not because I worship their God, is because I absolutely respect their choices. So if I'm at their home, I respect their culture. Um, and I think that's where you need to draw the line. Like there is times where I would say, hey, you know what, this goes against 
my belief, so I'm not going to do that. But that doesn't mean I'm judging them or I'm hating on their religion. I just think everybody needs to practice what they believe and respect what other people believe. Mm -hmm. That's with anything in life. It's not even just religion with politics, with all that stuff that causes such outrage. Yeah. It's crazy. You can't even talk about politics. No. I was like, guys, um, I was wondering for Mark in particular, if you were ever going to do a lot more of your cinematic stuff and post it on your YouTube channel. Cause I know I really enjoyed that a year or two ago when you were doing a lot of it. And I was just wondering if you'll ever do it again as a just a cinematic video because I really enjoyed those. Yeah, man, I think I will. Um, I kind of – George has left the set. He's getting more water. Oh, you. I can't believe they don't like my cinematics. Um, that's something that goes back to me wanting to create, to create stuff that I wanted to create rather than what I think people want to consume. And that's something I'm trying to get back to. What I've learned through the podcast is just like people are really enjoying us being ourselves. And that's what our vlogs were started off on. It was just us being ourselves. And then I kind of fell down that rabbit hole of like putting on a show and making my life seem like it's so great and so much fun. But uh, I definitely want to get back into the cinematics and, and doing real stuff and stuff that I enjoy because that's what people enjoy is us being real hi um, great show by the way we know uh, I think it's like my 10th time that I'm recording it but okay so I am a decent looking guy and oh confident most of the time I want a woman around to like in class or just some really attractive woman that I meet just on street or when I'm doing something like a cashier or, or whatever I um, try to look really high value to them. I try to be funny, uh, confident around them, uh, even if I don't feel like it. So I'm just feeling like I'm putting an act. uh, And because of that, I just feel uh, more, I just get more pressure on me and just become more insecure about myself. Because of that also, um, like... I have to qualify myself, I have to qualify myself, I have to qualify myself. Because of that mindset, I uh, have like, I think, zero girl uh, friends. Um, so my question was, how, how can I stop the qualification and just become my relaxed self around them? I'm going to answer this one. Uh, I think, I mean, this is what this is why I brought up earlier about knowing your role in the friend group. <laughs> Yeah, not even that, man. Okay, sorry, me, I don't know why I've got the giggles. Yeah, so I thought of something and this was funny. Sorry. No. <laughs> so here's the thing. Hypothetically, I'm gonna put a scenario in your head. Hopefully, other people that have the same question, they could, you know, imagine themselves too. If you met a girl on the street and you put on this act, this charade, this mm-hmm. pretend vision of what you're not, a mirage, if you will, of who you're not, and she falls in love with it. How you long, have to maintain that the yeah, whole time. How long do you think you'll be able to maintain that? Now, say you're quiet, you're meek, you're calm, and you meet the right one that wow, likes George, that. George, with the word meek. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, but yeah, it sounded it sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> and she falls in love with that. You shouldn't be worried about pretending to be somebody. You should be worried that the right one's walking by looking at the fake you. Because what if she would have fell in love with you, the quiet kid, mm-hmm. the kid that had more to share when it was the right time? You know what I mean? Like you shouldn't be scared of putting on that persona because you're going to have to keep up with that. You should be scared that you might be missing the love of your life that God made specifically for you. No, no. You said on the last podcast that no one is made for you. You said that everyone is made whole yeah. and those are just bonuses. But God, no one is made half and then the other person completes them. You said it on the last podcast. For sure. I don't think that he made you to feel <laughs> absent without that one person, but I definitely feel that he made you in the way that he made you. So that way, when you do fall in love, they're going to love you for how you were made. Let me give you an example. <laughs> I am out of my mind. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I tell jokes. There's a lot of girls that are like, ah, that's too much. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to deal with that. That's it makes uh, No, it, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And know, know your role. Like sometimes like the girls that think it's too much, they come for me. You get what I'm saying? Like that ass. Like there's times that they feel uncomfortable because George puts on a show and they and don't like attention. Scene. Yeah, he makes a scene in public and they're just like they'll sit back like this, like, what is going on? Like I'm yeah. so uncomfortable. So <clears throat> honestly, it's not too late. You sound young. 
Just be yourself. Be confident. You could be the quietest man and still come out the most confident man. Right. You well, don't it have sounds to, like he's got confidence. Yeah. He said he's a good looking dude. Yeah, you don't have to be uh, loud and funny and all that stuff to be. Here's the thing confident. that I, here's my thing, and I, I've learned this. I think dating, going on a date is stupid. Like, I hate, because that's, all, that's, going on a date is stupid. I think it's dumb. I think this that's, is why Mark always invites us out when he has a date. You know why? Because when you meet a girl for the first time and you're like, oh, I want to take her on a date, it's because she looks good. You, it's based off appearance. Shallow. Like, it's sh- what? That's shallow. You're wrong for it's that. It's based off appearance. And you're What's like, that? oh, wow. My first, I want to take this girl on a date and I want to get to know her based on how she looks. When, when you're Not all the time and you put on a show, you're trying to do something. You're like, oh, I'm going to take her to this nice place. I'm going to yeah. be a gentleman. I'm going to pick her up. I'm going to open her door for her. Yeah. What's you're, wrong with that? You're putting on a I show. I love dating. Bro, I love the fact right now that I can, I'm can. i bringing people around my friends and I can be... But where's the intimate moment, Mark? You have to be intimate. I'm not going to be... I st- like being friends first and then seeing who the person really is and then if I really fuck with them, freak with them. Um, I agree and yet very much disagree with you because I think if you're vulnerable on the very first day, you get to see through that crap. You know what I mean? Like you're one-on-one. So she's not... Because let me give you an example. You bring a girl, right, that you've never met or hung out with and around your friends, she's going to try to impress your friends too. I don't think so. I think she'll be. Yeah, hell yeah. Are you kidding me? I met met Belle's friends and I was freaking sweating bullets. Me, I was nervous. Yeah, but that's you. But that is in general. I've brought girls around you and they're shy. They don't even say anything. Exactly. Because you brought them around me. (laughs) Who's going to talk around me? Thank you. I don't know, man. I think I I I, agree, I I disagree with what you're saying. For example, I met this girl and I met her through a friend. Okay. And I, the friend invited her over. So I was like just being me and she was attracted to the normal me. I wasn't trying to impress her because I was under the assumption that my friend was trying to get with her. Why can't you be yourself by yourself? I just don't think that people are. I think you put but on that's a show. A, that's, that seems like a you problem, not an everybody problem. No, no, no. It's a you problem. No, I'm. I'm great. I'm great by myself and I'm great alone. I think you I think I think you just don't like no, entertaining. I'm, I I, don't, I I disagree. I think you're way better when there's less pressure on you. Bro, I don't think you've ever seen me on a date. <laughs> I'm I'm saying you and a you, pressure is one on one. That's what I'm saying. Like one on one like oh crap, it's just me and her. If she's having a bad time, is that's because it's me, not anybody else's fault. But so, I'm saying that I think when it's just a group of us, you're way more entertaining than when you're like one-on-one with a girl. You've never seen me one-on-one with a girl. Like, you know what I mean? Not one-on-one, but like I'm there with you and but I'm I see sa- you trying to impress her. But I am actually not the same person I am when I'm on a date. Not because I'm not funny. It's because I'm, I'm at the time I choose what I want her to see. But isn't that a false perception of who you really are? No, that's just a different layer that I would want her to know and not all these other people to know. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't be looking. But you- do you think that you're not be so? I mean, I know that we all act differently around our girl, right? We all do it. At uh, when you when you're when for you're example, new, when it's new. Yeah and no. Like for example, if I'm in a relationship and say my girl's sitting here right now, I'm not going to talk about girls I've hooked up with and done all that stuff with because I know that out of respect. Her, yeah, yeah, that would make her I, feel uncomfortable. Okay, but I'm saying, but a different different topic. Besides, like, you, like, sleeping with other girls and us talking about it, that's guy talk. That's locker room talk. You know what I mean? That's not, right. like, something you want to say in front of any girl. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, but besides that, if your girl's right there and it's a healthy relationship, you should be able to discuss right. anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like realistically, Belle knows everything about my life. She's known every girl that I've been with. She, she knows, knows about that one dude? Every dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she knows about every single detail in my life. That way there's no surprises and then we're kind of riding. This is, this is just yeah, how it is. So no, I could talk about that stuff in front of her, but it's just not respectful. I wouldn't do I that. I think that that's where I messed up in my last relationship, but I was yes, scared but of same like- Same here. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Back to the other guy, you learn from each relationship. We weren't faking who we were, but we were Burying a lot of part of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a big part of us, we buried and we hid. And then we had to do that. And then, you know, when push came to shove and when things get hard, you kind of mentally are like, God, I kind of want to go back to like my old self. So I agree mm-hmm. with you on that. But I do feel like you should be able to have one-on-ones because I wouldn't be sane or have a deep connection with my girl if I didn't have those one-on-one dinners where I really got to know I'm her. I'm saying early on. Do you early th- on, yeah. You, early on, you're straight yeah, up yeah, yeah, one-on-one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, think about it this way. Realistically. We all hung out with Belle. Yeah. Right? Nothing happened. And then I took her one-on-one. And that one night that we had one-on-one, we got to know each other on a deeper level. 
opened up many doors. Yeah. She only looked at me as a friend and didn't want anything to do with me more than that. But then we had one on one and I showed her a side that I don't like to show other people. Mm. And she's like, oh, crap, this guy's not as stupid as he seems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, here, let me ask you this. Do you think it's the guy's job? You said in one-on-one, if, if a girl's not having a good time, it's your fault. Exactly. Do you think it is the guy's job to continue? Because here's my thing. When I'm one-on-one and yeah. I'm, I, I got like 30 to 40 minutes of entertainment in me, and, and if out. I'm not getting anything back, I check the fuck out. Really? Um, Do you think it's my job to entertain the girl the entire night or should she some, give something back? I, you know what? I, mm, every man is different. And I, res- uh, you, like I said, you, like every girl's different. You know, we have the girls that talk a lot. We have the mm-hmm. girls that don't talk a lot. We have the girls that talk about meaningless things. You have girls that talk about amazing things. Every, every girl is different just as every guy's different, right? So it's different strokes for different folks. I am the entertainer. I do it with guys around me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I do hold that accountable. I, that is my thing. So right. if she's having a bad time, then I'm like, oh, crap, I'm not having a good day. And, you know, I was really expecting to have her laugh. Every single date I've ever been on, every even if it didn't work out, that girl would have been like, dude, this is the funnest date I've ever been on. That's my goal is to mm-hmm. make sure she has fun. Now, how you handle it doesn't have to be joke, 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 but you could have like a, like a serious one-on-one to stimulate her mind mentally so she's like, wow, I've never been in my mind that much in such a good way. I really like hanging out with this guy. So like I said, you don't have to make her laugh all the time, but I think it is your job to keep her stimulated sexually, mentally, and uh, physically. Sexually, mentally, and physically. There you go. Wow, that was a good question. We just went off. That was great. That, I love was listening to all of it. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I like the questions that, that do that. Hey, Mark and George. This is Shashank all the way from India. So proper. Woo! My question to you guys is, Money, health, love. How would you arrange these three words? As in, would you want money, health, to love. prioritize money first, then health, then love? Or would it be love first, then health, then money? I'd like to know your guys' views on this. Uh, love the podcast. You guys are doing a great job. I already got job. mine. What do you have? Thank you. I got, I got health, love, love money. money. Done. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because money ain't shit if, nope. you're, if you don't have anybody. There's a Jim Carrey quote. It's, I uh, wish everybody could have all the things in the world, all the money in the world to realize that none of those things make you happy. Nothing. The money so right. Money comes and goes, man. I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> it means absolutely nothing. So that's that's going to be on the bottom. But I also do understand money does bring happiness when it comes mm-hmm. to like paying a good house or getting a... Like, Not having to worry about certain... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all right, here's the thing. So, th- th- don't be a bum. But if we're, we're, yeah. we're talking about billions, like yeah. millions or yeah, shit yeah. like that. So that, that's where we think about money. So... If but it's even like millions and millions of dollars, it, it, that's what we're thinking about it. In it. I'm just saying, like, you still have stressful things happening in life, whether you have money or you don't For have sure, money. For sure, 100%. You know? There's just different things to stress about when you have but money. But when we're talking about the money, love, and health, we're talking about, like, would you rather have millions of dollars or yeah. would you have love of your life or would you have health? I'll tell you, this is what we're saying. Millions, we'll make it on our own. We don't need to have somebody hand it to us. So that's fine. Uh, love is important. But it's not as important as a health because nothing is worse than losing somebody you love. And health to me is number one. So if they came up to me, they're like, yo, you're and your loved ones, health comes first, but you might not hang out with your loved ones as much. Then I'm like, all right, cool. Then health and then love and then money. Yeah. Health is important because if you're not healthy, then you can't spend your money and make love. Imagine trying to make love with no money and bad health. That sounds like (laughs) this. Ready? And that's going to do it for this week's episode of The Pillman <laughs> Show. If you guys enjoyed this one, drop a thumbs up. And if we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Good night. Oh.